Francis Ngannou is the scariest human being on earth. It's phone to try to get a matchup with Ngannou. Oh! He is the former UFC heavyweight champion and the most feared fighter in UFC history. But he hasn't fought in almost 500 days. I think it's 500 days. Why? Why? Why, Michael? Why hasn't Francis fought in 500 days? I'm glad you asked, guys. That's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here for. And in order to understand why Francis Ngannou clearly only has one option left, we have to briefly go over exactly why every other major MMA organization passed on signing the baddest man in the world today. To start off, he obviously wants freedom. That's what he keeps saying. And what does that mean? So he wanted more money and he wanted to pursue boxing like McGregor did. Dana wanted no part of that. He wants health care for all fighters. Yeah, imagine that. And he wants in-ring sponsorships. So the UFC would never do this. Why? Because UFC and Dana White are not pushovers. They're not pushovers for McGregor. If they were pushovers for McGregor, they wouldn't have canceled a UFC event that McGregor was supposed to headline. They're not pushovers. At the end of the day, do you think Dana White's a pushover? No. Another thing is the fact that they're not going to do that for someone who's 36 years old because they're just going to they're going to be completely fine without Francis Ngannou at the end of the day. And then another company Francis Ngannou met with was One Championship. Olivier Cost. Oh, good night, Irene. This this was an interesting one, One Championship because the One Championship president, One Champion one champion shout out one championship sponsored video at the end of the day the president said it was non-financial matters and this was like a weird thing he did because he messaged ariel hawani out of the blue doing it it was pretty much there they wanted everyone to know that they could afford it they just decided not to they just decided not to sign francis Ngannou, the craziest knockout artist in on earth right now like no we'll pass we'll pass no worries guys i don't care I don't want him. Name five one championship fighters. And if my friend Lyndon is watching, you don't count. This guy spanks it's a one championship. So uh, one of the, the non-financial matter was the fact that Francis Agano wanted to be on the board of directors, which at first I'm like, what? No way. How is, how would that work? But I think it'd be cool. If anything, the people in suits that are behind these MMA organizations, they should be fighters. I mean, they also should be educated on what they're doing. Duh. But... Francis Ngannou, just as a fighter, I think that would be cool. But the fucking people in suits can't th put their shoes or have never stepped inside the cage. Better way of saying it. So Francis Ngannou can relate to the fighters and make the best decisions for the fighters. So that's not even a bad idea at the end of the day. But then also BKFC also talked to him because imagine, imagine Francis Ngannou bare knuckle. Talk about call the ambulance, but not for me. Hey, old man, give me everything. Oh, oh, call an ambulance, call an ambulance. But not for me. He would decapitate every human being. I, I would never want to see that because he would actually kill someone, dude. The president of that just said that super unrealistic money. That's all the information I have for their knuckle. I, okay, I'm going to take that. I'm gonna, I, don't, I don't know how long it's been with that. All right, so we're, we're looking normal now. So with all that being said, clearly has three options left. One, Bellator. Bellator has his, historically, I mean, from what I've heard at least, to pay a lot better than the UFC. That's kind of like one of their competitive advantages. Corey Anderson, I don't know what he was making in the UFC. And he said that in one fight, he made more money than his entire UFC career. And another thing is Bellator is linked with Showtime. Showtime puts on boxing events. So if Francis wanted a box, there you go. All right. Secondly, I've written down. It's weird. It must be a typo. It says he can actually suck on Dana White's toes and plead for forgiveness. I don't know. I definitely, that must have been a chat GBT response. I don't know. But like, if I'm going to go off of it, it's pretty self-explanatory. He's got to give him some good technique, plead for forgiveness and, you know, kiss his toes. Sell it on OnlyFans, if anything. You'll make a shit ton of money from that. And you'll also be able to fight John Jones. Francis is a big old pussy. All that muscle with a big ass pussy. And then the one, the only option that Francis Ngannou has to do is the PFL. You want to know why? All right. I'll tell you, homie. The biggest thing, Jake. The problem, child, Paul. He signed with PFL. I'm not saying he's going to fight Francis Ngannou. As much as I would spend my life savings on that, it's not going to happen. But the reason why that's a link and so important, and the reason why I think he is going to sign with the PFL, is the fact that Jake Paul owns his own boxing promotion, most valuable promotions. Francis Ngannou fights on a Jake Paul 
co-main event as crazy as that would be and also jake paul is a huge advocate for fighter pay obviously i'm assuming healthcare as well and just all that stuff so i feel like him and francis would get along like a peas in the pot